and welcome back to the Tabletop Tavern campaign to A-list you sophomore slump. My name is Jenny. I'm going to be your dungeon master now, but also forever. So get used to it. I do use she, her pronouns currently. Who knows? Gender is a fickle thing, and so are my preferences <laughs> for literally anything. I'm going to allow my beautiful, wonderful, talented players to introduce themselves, starting with the beautiful, the fabulous, the... um uh. She gets enough compliments. Victoria. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I am Victoria. You can call me Vic. I use she, her pronouns. I, I just blanked on what we were supposed to say here, but I play Fleur Farrow. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Doe. I also use she, her pronouns, and I play Ian Farrow. Hi, I'm Pip. I use they, them, and I play Vesper Thistletune. Hi, my name is Stacy. I will be playing Rosalie Motley today and for as long as I can. And I use she, her pronouns. Hi, I'm Cam. I use they, them. Um, I will be playing Essie Hepper today. Um, and also a reminder, get your, get vaccines, get your flu shot, get your COVID booster. Get your COVID booster. Get all your vaccines. Do that yeah. combo. I need to get today. the bivalent one soon. Number five. Also, uh, you know, get your um, MMR vaccines, vaccinate your kids, vaccinate your meat. All of these are important. Mm -hmm. Um, Your pets. Official tabletop tavern stance. Yeah. Pro vaccines. (laughs) We are really like we are pro all kinds of we're pro vaccines for shit you haven't even heard of. (laughs) We're in in favor of that. In case all of the people who were angry at us for using pronouns are around are still you know? here. <laughs> we're just trying to really drive do drugs it home. do oh drugs God, use pronouns <laughs> it took them like five episodes in to i realize. know i died hardware oh. medication is for your animals and not for your human person self mm-hmm. all right now that we've got that all out there, um for those of you who weren't here also mask up okay for those of you who mm-hmm. weren't here last episode or for my players who were victimized by uh Lost file corruption yeah. um and also law school oh, yeah <laughs> raise your hand if you've been personally victimized by law school um <laughs> we're gonna all just know point where we're going secondarily yeah. through jenny's exactly you, you hurt my you friend you hurt me, to me on the- <laughs> uh last week on the tabletop tavern the party narrowly escaped a very intense combat by the skin of their teeth do largely in part, if not exclusively in part, to Rosalie's less than stellar decision making. They then found themselves in the green court of the Fey Wild, guided by Hearsome to a, a pretty sweet theme hotel. We've all been to one, right? Those are pretty nice. Oh, yeah. They befriended an angry cabbie, also mm-hmm. something most of us have probably done. You've either, you know, befriended them or been victimized by them, and uh, settled down for the night. Essie posed some very important questions of Fleur, who did her best to do with the public education system in Kralin, could not. And we pick up now, not where we left off, but in a taxi cab, speeding down the crowded interstate of the Green Court. Now, the interesting thing about the Green Court, as I've mentioned before, is that it is really just like a city that sprouts from the trees. The buildings blend in perfectly with the foliage that surrounds you. The people who walk down the sidewalks and drive the strange Arcana Tech cars are all just kind of look like people Ian would hang out with. They're dressed in greens and browns, clothing made of natural fibers and woven reeds. They have hair decorated with like all kinds of sprigs of greenery and leaves and they're very juxtaposed by the urban setting in which you find yourselves it seems that nowhere is immune from the development of mankind and indeed here fey kind you speed down this highway all of you kind of clinging to each other vesper is in the front seat having what appears to be a very in-depth conversation with your very angry fey taxi cab driver uh kind of going oh as the guy's like yeah i know i know right that's what i told him so i i took him out and i shook him around and i had my cousin I Benny him? him down and and like, oh, 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 oh. i was ready but <laughs> vesper sorry vesper no, Aspen. Aspen. yeah yeah <laughs> it's been a really long week okay. <laughs> i was like damn best <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Aspen is, is a very 
very <laughs> heated conversation with the uh, with the Seder taxi cab driver, and the rest of you are all crammed together in the back seat. This means that Vesper is kind of like half on Ian's lap. Ian, your legs are like kind of over Fleur. Fleur, your legs are pulled up to your chin. Oh. You're trying like very hard to take up as little space as possible. And uh, Rosalie and Essie are actually pretty comfy. Uh, neither of them are really with it enough to realize that everyone else in the car would like them to take up less space. You are all speeding down the highway, clinging for your lives. Is there anything in particular you're doing in the back of this car? What do you do? When you are about to die in a car crash at any given moment. Oh god. I think Fleur is just watching the conversation between the taxi driver and the dog in awe. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, oh, oh. well, I'm telling yeah. you, all you have to do is so so you learn how to get into the bag, right? And then you pull out the treats and you don't even have to open <laughs> the bag of treats. You could just hey, 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 hey. Oh, I, don't, I don't we don't he doesn't need to learn that. He doesn't need to learn that. <laughs> Trust me. You're not feeding him enough. Oh uh, look at him. Is he's that what he's telling you? Me. Ian gets involved in the like heated conversation <laughs> between his dog, the satyr driving the Fay taxi, uh, and just like really gets into it. Vesper, what are you doing? I'm, I think I'm trying. I'm. I think I'm just trying to to, to study and make note of like the landmarks, maybe, and then just use uh uh try and keep my spellbook open with like a mage hand, like a gimbal. <laughs> I'm just like, oh god, please, lady. Vesper, I need you to know I'm not gyroscopically stable. Um, I'm getting a little bit carsick. Oh, I understand. I understand. I think too. I'm gonna ink. Oh, I think no. I'm gonna ink. <laughs> I, 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 I just, I close, I close them, and uh, and I like try and uh, like find stable ground on like my lap or something. Vesper, as you desperately cling to your uh, like your stomach's ability to retain its contents. Uh, Essie and Rosalie are seated next to you. Uh, what are what are you two doing? Uh, is there? Can I do a perception check for any CDs? Yeah, you can. <laughs> I got a thirty-one. Okay, so uh, Jesus. Okay. we all remember the early two thousands. Uh, <laughs> there's one of those like fabric books of CD mm -hmm. sleeves <gasps> tucked into the back pocket of the seat in front of you. Um, Rosalie, you kind of like reach in. You flip it open, and um, there's 27 identical copies of the soundtrack to the movie My Big Fat Seder Wedding. Oh, obsessed. Obsessed. Oh, my God. <laughs> Rosalie, as she brings the book closer to um, Essie, will just kind of keep flipping <laughs> each uh, page, hoping to see something she recognizes. And hoping maybe to see if Essie will recognize anything. <laughs> do, do you, do, are you familiar with this one? Um, I'm not really, but I am willing to try. <laughs> Holding Rosalie's hand the whole time. Essie is kind of going to jump through and like push the CD uh, into the like player. Um, completely ignoring the conversation. Going Let's on. have a slide a hand check. Oh. <laughs> I think as Let's Rosalie is goes. flipping as well, Fleur's like, oh, my mom loves that movie. <laughs> All right, so you got a 16. <laughs> see, th plus three wisdom. Let me just roll a quick d20. I asked Essie if the if the case has the lyric. Okay, uh, <laughs> you really go not. in to uh, pop this this CD in and without taking his eyes off the road, uh, Stavros, 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 mm -hmm. the, uh, the cabbie rips not only the CD out of your hand, but takes his other hand off of the wheel, reaches back and grabs the CD case and goes, my cousin had to pirate those for me that you, you, you're not going to get any of those unless you pay me 25, 25 bucks. Oh, no, we don't, we don't want to pay for that. <laughs> we we just want to play them so we can listen to some music. What is the sound of titillating conversation not enough for you? Do you hear this shit, Aspen? You hear this shit? <laughs> you all kind of well, settle back as he speeds off. And um, <laughs> Rosalie, as Essie kind of digs through the CD booklet, desperately searching for just one CD that is different from the others, um, there's a little pinging in the back of your mind. 
uh, Biddy. Hey, you there? Earth to Rosalie. Uh, hello. Or Feywild to Rosalie. Oh, what's up, Biddy? How you doing? Uh, hi. Hi, hi Mustard Teed. <laughs> what did I tell you about that name, Biddy? Sorry, I'm sorry. What's, what's up? What's up? <laughs> you're on my turf now, you hear? You, you keep pulling shit like that, you're going to run into some real trouble. Uh, it seems pretty nice so far. <clears throat> Speaking of trouble, um, couldn't help but uh, notice you didn't take my offer. Oh, uh, it, there was another offer that seemed a little more satisfying yeah uh about that you know that uh when you open up the gate spell you can see into the dimension into which you're you're stepping right uh no i i did not know that all right so uh i don't want to pry a lady's business is her own and whatnot, and I myself am a gentleman, and uh, you know, it's none of my what I, Rosalie? Yes? I am not unfamiliar with the Infernal Plane, nor am I unfamiliar with those who uh, make their homes in the various circles of hell, so uh, <clears throat> I want to tell you what to do. You're a big girl, et cetera, et cetera, at least metaphorically speaking. You're actually quite small. Um, I just... You know what you agreed to, right? Like, you thought uh, you thought the whole thing through. You were careful, you know. Um, my friends needed my help. Or at least that help. That is not answering the question, Biddy. Uh, no, I don't know, but I agree to hear some. I just know I could do something. Okay, sick, sick. And I'm assuming this is kind of a standard sell your soul to hell kind of contract, so you can't tell anybody, right? Uh, Rosalie just kind of nods. <laughs> I don't You're know very I lucky I can perceive this plane from... Uh, the literal ukulele I'm trapped inside of or else we would be having a bad time here, Biddy. Uh, <clears throat> so you can't tell anybody, and no offense, but uh, I've gotten to know you pretty well over the last mm. year or so of being trapped inside, again, a literal ukulele. Um, <clears throat> and I just have to say, you're a shit liar, Rosalie. You are not good at lying. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> Oh, shit, you got me. I believe that one. Oh, man. <clears throat> so, um, not to... Uh... Can, can you help? Well, I thought you'd never ask, Biddy. Not to, you know, yank my own chain or uh, diddle my own whatever, but uh, <laughs> I happen to be one of the best liars of all time. Don't ask me how to prove that because, you know... Lady's business is her own, et cetera, et cetera. But um, yeah, absolutely, I can help you. So uh, first things first, you are not convincing in your face. <laughs> We're just going to start there. Your face is bad. Not in terms of how it looks. It's a great face. I think it's it's lovely. You're just, when you like right now, everything that you're feeling, I can see it. And I'm not even on the same plane as you. I don't even know what I'm feeling. <laughs> Judging by your face, it's a mix of offended and anxious. And then if I can't show my face, what do I show? All right, so uh, here's the thing. You ever gotten a present you don't like? <laughs> like, let's say hypothetically you're... 8,017 years old and your dad gives you a whole kingdom okay and he's like all right this is your court now and uh you're not that jazzed on it right because what you really wanted was like i don't know some fairy blow or something and he was like no here's some uh here's a kingdom right and but he's your dad and you don't want to hurt his feelings so you're just sitting there and you gotta like you gotta look excited about it right 
Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. I yeah, your dad's thing. given you a kingdom. Oh no, that sounds quite lovely, but uh, more of so what, fact. like socks or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've gotten socks that I don't particularly enjoy as gifts too. So, um, <clears throat> you open up the gift in front of them, right? And what what do you do with your face? Um, I pose for the photo. Okay, right. So, and what do you do in the in the photo? Smile. Okay, all right. So, that's lying, Biddy. <clears throat> so it's I... lying, so you don't hurt anybody's feelings, right? So, just think of this as the same thing, but instead of lying to keep from hurting someone's feelings, you're lying to keep your friends from being murdered. Can do. No pressure. No Can... pressure. <laughs> Rosalie starts smiling. <laughs> okay, not like that. Again, you're f- we'll, we'll work on it. Okay, the other thing I've noticed is uh, you walk into a lot of conversations where there are a lot of questions, and it's not your fault. Your two friends over there won't shut the fuck up and, you know, listen to an answer for once, which you could play to your advantage. I'm sure you've realized I don't answer all of their questions. They ask too many. Just answer the most recent question. It's a classic m- trick that men use. I've seen your buddy over there do it all the time. You should try it sometime. Actually, try it now. Try it now. Ask oh. him three questions in a row, and I guarantee you he's only going to answer the last one. Uh, Ian? Oh, uh, could you scoot over? Also, did you see what's outside? And did what do you think of my dress today? Your dress looks great. I like it. See, Betty? So you just answer the, the most recent question. And then the other thing is called redirection. They ask you a question, getting a little too close to the uncomfortable truth. Just steer the conversation away. Here, try, try it on me. I'll show you. Ask me, ask me a question. Any question. Why are you helping me? <laughs> so uh, this guy, this, dri- this taxi driver, what is his name? Stavros? Have you noticed that he treats the dog like it's a person? Uh, yeah, it seems like they're having a good con- Classic oh, oh, redirection. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, you got this one, Biddy. Keep your friends alive and... Uh, just remember that uh, you can make a choice for all the best reasons and it can still be the wrong choice, okay? And you can't undo it now, but uh, I think it's a little too late to keep everyone you love from getting dragged into it with you. Uh, thank you. Here's some. Later, Biddy. The car speeds down, and uh, eventually you arrive in front of what appears to be a like towering hedge wall. You have seen hedges before, especially in like Ian and Fleur's neighborhood. The pharaohs live in like a pretty upper middle class neighborhood that uses hedges as like fences, but for mm-hmm. people who are too classy for wood. <laughs> this, however, is a hedge that is probably 500 or 600 feet tall. It stretches upwards into the sky. In front of you is an opening in this kind of seamless array of foliage um, over which stands an archway that appears to be made of twisting roots, long branches braided together in like a semicircle on which hangs a sign that says Labyrinth State Park and Nature Preserve. As you stand there, you can see these vines kind of twisting, continuing to grow, continuing to knot. You watch as they try to grow over the sign and something magic seems to repel them away from the edges of the wood. And instead they twist back down into the ground. The entire thing is writhing and moving like some kind of strange tentacles of an unseen creature. Um, Attached to one of the edges of the archway is like a plastic bucket full of pamphlets. Uh, oh. Okay, so uh, that'll be, uh, let's call it 35 of the circles, three of the squares, and uh, seven of the prismatic shards. Uh, Rosalie will grab her <laughs> little bag and quickly try to count uh, in her palm. <laughs> uh, 12 uh, circles? Listen, Biddy, you can just, uh, just, just take three of the big squares like the big cubes 
and just hand it to him and tell him to keep the change. Oh, keep the change. <laughs> Pleasure doing business with you. He gets into his uh, car and speeds away the like muffler rattling, leaving the five of you plus Aspen, Macbeth, and Strahd standing in front of this giant hedge maze. Right. Should I can't did you say there was a sign? Or was there there's a, there's a sign there. it's yeah. in silver. Yes. Yeah. Fleur looks up at the sign and goes, I someone's gonna have to mm. uh Labyrinth State Park and Nature Reserve. Right. So should we just like I'm I'm like Ian, I guess so. Is, is there a zone? Yeah, it's it's like, I, we should have asked if there were. The, we should have asked if there was a fee for the state park. Oh, uh, <laughs> hey, Biddy. Uh, could you have the wizard maybe get me in the the mind oh, link um, thing? Hey, uh, Vess, mm -hmm. could you do the mind link thingy? Uh, where we can all talk to your son? Oh yeah, of course, I'd love to. Um, awesome. but I will, uh, so I have to like, just sit down for a second and just like try and speak on it. It's going to take the same amount of time, but it'll sound like I'm speaking really fast. Um, uh, and I cast, uh, uh, to the telepathic bond. While Vess does that, Ian's going to like bend down, like hike up his socks a little bit, tie, tie his boots a little tighter and like, you know, a, a kind of rearrange it in his backpack, but really there's like nothing to rearrange, but he's like in full ranger hiking mode. And he like slings his backpack over his shoulder and walks like with the utmost confidence towards the entrance uh, and is going to like kind of sneakily like look over his shoulder and, and grab a pamphlet, hoping nobody notices. He Isn't it's okay. this a park? It's a park. Why are you tying your shoes? Because your shoes could fall off at any moment, Fleur. It's a hedge maze. Are you saying they weren't tied before? I'm saying they weren't tied correctly before. Mm -hmm. You have to properly get together your slippers to make sure that you're entering and navigating the stage. Are you wearing Ian gets it. at a park? I love you, but sometimes you just say words. <laughs> and I love you, but... I'm lost. Besides, you would not be Speaking wearing just shoes words, on stage, nor do... would you be wearing character shoes outside. Yeah, true. I don't know what character shoes are, but yeah. And Your character art shoes has... is character shoes if you uh, are like Faniel Fay Suez. Yeah, he was fantastic. <laughs> oh, here's some. In Blinken. Um, oh, here's some. Hey, what's up? So here's the thing. First of all, Vesper, your idea of art has a lot of rules. You gotta let that go, my friend. Just embrace the chaos of the universe. Or at least try to organize that chaos into lists instead of constraining it with, you know. I have I rules. have. They're color coded. I can show you. I, I've seen them. I've seen them. They were all over our uh, room back home. Like here's some I uh, I like guidelines. My friend, I respect the hell out of you, man, and I sincerely I think that you and I could not party together. You can absolutely party with Vess. I can. I can. Vess is really fun to party with. Maybe I. I did write Aspen last on, time, but Vess wrote Aspen. It was, I sort of Vess forgot. Was very the, cool uh, at that frat party. The mind link puts me in with these two too, but that's okay. Uh, so here's. What <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't think of it. But I I will keep that in mind if you'd like. Always with the questions, my man. So uh that's a statement. No, I wasn't talking, talking about you, my oh, okay. <laughs> You're always cool in my book. Again, not sure we'd do great at a party together, but I think that'd be more my problem than yours, you feel? I'm okay so with I, that. Yeah, anyways. I mean like, yeah, I'd go to a library and read a book with you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any, <clears throat> ed, I know we're not on a time crunch, but I'm sure you want to get out of there. Um, any advice? Uh, yeah, I got a couple things. Uh, first of all, I take out my tiny quill and a notebook. <laughs> oh my god! Be careful. Good rule of thumb with magical mazes is that once you're in, you can't get out until you've solved it. Uh, don't agree to play any games with anyone. That's a basic rule of the Feywild, but. 
So far, I've noticed that none of you are particularly good with the rules of the Feywild, so I just thought I'd restate for the record. <laughs> no games, no names, no food. Most of it rhymes, should be easy to remember, but I've witnessed games, you all. Names, games, games, names, food. We games. make bad choices. That one doesn't rhyme, my guy. Well, it's not your fault, Biddy. This one uh, kind of rides with... <sighs> Here's some. Listen, you can just call my name next time just like say mm-hmm. it just... um well, well we're doing this, or maybe <laughs> well we're going through this or maybe back when we were in the car uh can i pop on inspiring leader and give everybody 15 temp hp absolutely you're sitting in the back of the car flipping through the uh the like cd book and you're just reading aloud each of the track titles but you're doing it as an inspiring speech um <laughs> So you it's all the worst of- inspiring speech ever. <laughs> it's so Extra on brand. HP. Um, here's something that goes, uh, Latherin's also filled with all kinds of cr- cursed creatures. My go-to advice for them is don't talk to them, don't touch them, don't let them touch you. They'll try. Meant to pick up some fly swatters on my way, but uh, what can you do? Sometimes you get sucked into, you know, customs enforcement, and then you're here, and nobody here sells fly swatters because... We don't have the human ingenuity that the uh, mortal plane does. What else? What else? Uh, uh, We've been through uh, no food, no names, no games. Here's some. What's up, Biddy? I got a question for you. I probably have an answer for you. I don't know if you're going to like it. But uh, we're... We're coming here to get you out of the ukulele. For sure. Is there going to be anyone mad that we're trying to do that? Because I mean, oh, sh- yeah, like, I mean, like, sure. I mean, like, you yeah. got put into the ukulele. I assume for a reason, I assume unjustified because you're cool. But I just want to, you know, like, I just want to know what, what kind of danger we're heading into word well so there's dryads in the uh maze sure. you don't want to fuck with them i uh, rosalie in your head exclusively you to you you hear again this is called redirection you gotta practice it biddy you got it redirect smile and answer the last cues <laughs> so uh, I have to do, like what we just fought totally i mean like is there anyone who's gonna be like that's the here's some ukulele and be mad at us for that a lot I think of instruments be look mad. similar, Biddy. So, like, okay. you ever been to like a musical instrument store? All the guitars kind of look the same. You know, like the bass model, very familiar. Uh, or just kind of looks think, at Vess. I don't think I have any other advice to y'all. Okay. Um, uh, there's a lot of magical interference, so I could be a little bit hard to talk to in there. So that's just a heads up. Okay. Uh, is there something we can, pr- provided we f- find Pan, which is the goal, um, to clear the airwaves for you? Uh, nah, it'll be fine. Pan will know what to do. Just uh, tell him it's me. Tell him what we're after. And uh, I think that's it. Essie, in your head, you hear. Remember what I said about uh, how who I am is not who I was, right? Mm. Do me a favor and hold on to that one, please. And uh, when you see Pam, tell him I'm sorry. I will. And stay safe. Always. <laughs> Um, uh, you, you said that we might not be able to talk to you in there. Yeah. Could this be like a, like a last moment won't be able to talk to you? Fate's a ficky thing, Betty. Fickle, fickle thing. Sorry, it's been a... <laughs> Human sayings are hard. Regional you know, dialect. not my, uh... Not my native language. Mm. 
Uh, but, you know, I... It could be. The same way that any goodbye could be a last goodbye. This one might carry a little bit more risk. But, uh... If you can get him to believe the apology, and I don't think anyone but you really could, I'll be back out soon. And if I'm not, uh, thanks for trying. And thanks for caring. I'd always try for you. Are you kidding me? (laughs) You're you. Of course I'd always try for you. (laughs) And, uh, you're you. Thanks for... (laughs) being very very cool and i think you're very awesome and i like you a lot and i i can't wait to talk to you again later <laughs> later buddy okay bye <laughs> uh the as, mind link kind of clicks off oh go ahead as um they're having that conversation could I try to sneakily minor illusion this one book to look like a postcard from the labyrinth, perhaps? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, right. um, I will do that, and I will pull it out and say, "Oh, uh, before I go, I, I, I promised my uh, dad and my mom and my parents' friend <laughs> <laughs> uh, that I, I would get mom? them." Well, I mean, yeah, but our mom? Yeah, I, I mean, Rosalie means Harry. Yeah, Harry. Um, <laughs> anyways, I promised them I'd get them a postcard. Um, would Why you guys did you get the postcard? Yeah, I just found it. it was it seemed like the last one. Uh, it was by the the anyways, and then Rosalie's gonna write her name on it, <laughs> uh, and hands it over to Fleur. Fleur if says- you guys could sign it as well. Yeah, okay. Fleur signs just like the standard way she would sign, which is just Fleur with a heart at the end. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then she will hand it to Vesper. Okay. I um I use Fleur's arm to sign and I go, Oh, I'm glad this has like prepaid postage. <laughs> I thought it was cute, doesn't it? I didn't know that postage was even a thing in the Feywild. I really should hey yeah, Vesper, can we mean- study the Feywild yeah. at some point together? I have been we- doing nothing not not since. We met practically. Rosalie yeah, will pass it to, to be fair, Vess, you. You do nothing but study. Um, <laughs> of course, Rosalie. Uh, who is who? Should I make this out to? Oh, ah, uh, it's not a. It's not just an just put a kissy face <laughs> along with it. They'll know. They'll know. Mm, okay. Uh, <laughs> as it will pop out some terrible lip gloss, <laughs> and then autograph. And then anything, anything for you, always, always and forever. <laughs> And then hand it to Ian. Uh, do you want Aspen to sign it too? I uh, no, oh. it's okay. <laughs> oh, I was gonna like spit in the dirt and like dip his palm some mud and then like oh, smack it God. on. But that's I fine. Mean... That's fine. Um, <laughs> Ian, Ian starts to like really focus in, and he, he ends up drawing like a little oak tree. <laughs> and he's like, they'll know it's me. They'll know. Yeah, they'll know. Oh my God. <laughs> and gives it back to Rosalie. Thank no. you. Thank you. And then Rosalie will put it in her pocket. Um, and that will be it. Um, did I, was I able to successfully get that pamphlet without other folks noticing? Yes. Um, can I also maybe sneakily peruse said pamphlet? Yeah, so on the front is a picture of like a smiling elf family and like like uh, ankle ankle high hiking boots, like kind of long cargo shorts, uh, like nice sturdy hiking t-shirts with backpacks on their back. One of them has like kind of like a camelback kind of thing between their teeth. They're all grinning at the camera in front of the labyrinth. There's like a bright blue sky overhead. You can see some birds. It says labyrinth state park and nature preserve um like a family friendly adventure for all you flip it open and on the inside printed in sylvan just over and over and over and over again alongside like pictures of like smiling happy fae creatures like having a good time in nature like eating a peanut butter sandwich feeding a peanut butter sandwich to a squirrel like posing yeah, next trail to a statue of pan um are just the words over and over and over and over again. Those who escape leave themselves behind. 
Those who escape leave themselves behind. Those who escape leave themselves behind. Those who escape leave them themselves behind. And then in the middle, like one different sentence is <clears throat> the king of the wild sits on a throne of lies. And then it's just those who escape leave themselves behind <laughs> over and over and over again. And when you flip it to the back, there's a picture of like a bunch of rangers grinning. Um, at the top, it says, brought to you by the Green Court Parks and Recreation Department. And then below it, uh, in like cute little fonts, like kind of slanted quasi handwriting flood, is just the phrase, <clears throat> death awaits all who enter. And then underneath it says, leave no trace, pack it in, pack it out. You just kind of like closes it, opens it again. Folds it up, folds mm -hmm. it in half, mm -hmm. makes a mental note to talk to these rangers later about their uh, advertising. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he's just going to like slip it into his pocket. <laughs> like, they don't need to know this. <laughs> he's like, um, cool. So uh, who's in for a labyrinth? I, 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 I want to like, would have been taking that time mostly while they were all uh, talking and signing the postcard to just cast mage armor. Um, mm -hmm. Just wanted to say that before we cross those doors. Uh, but yeah, just Vez goes like, yeah, sure. He's gonna like side eye over to Fleur, and then he's just gonna like once again straighten the backpack, full ranger mode, and uh, head towards the entrance. When they connect eyes Fleur's gonna do very quick silent twin talk and she's gonna like squint her eyes and be like should I be worried <laughs> without actually saying it but like he knows that that's what that means he, Ian's gonna like reach into his pocket and grab the like really folded pamphlet and like go in like he's gonna give Fleur a big hug and like stick it in her back pocket while he does it <laughs> as and as he does that she goes I can't read so <laughs> I love you, Fleur. It says I love, we're gonna die. I love you too. I I tug on <laughs> Essie if we hear hear that because he's making very obvious. I tug on Essie's sleeve and I go, I was not I was concerned. I am more concerned. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. They, they really are bad at acting. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, I no. That's complete. I was like, if 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 Ian is saying I love you, Fleur, I'm just like, we're going to die here. Yeah, the last time I saw him say I love you, they were literally dying. Why so. can't I just say I love you to my sister? Yeah, hello. We're very good at saying we're really that we close. Love each other. We're very Thank close. Very we're twins. We're twins. Mm -hmm. Remember? Don't forget about that. Twins. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I go. I I do turn to Ian and go. Actually, you're right. I mean. With the talk we all had, I, I, I can see you trying, and I like light up and I'm like, yeah, Say, do it again, do it more often. <laughs> We're not, I don't know what talk you're talking have. about, but yeah, his face one. drops a little, and he's like, I don't know, here's some told me some things. We kind of, <laughs> you guys bonded. We yeah. did. It was a lovely sleepover. I definitely didn't cry. Okay, so can we anyways. talk about this? In the lab, I'm so proud of you reclaiming your masculinity. <laughs> I didn't know that's what I was doing. <laughs> Rosalie, under her breath, is like, "Oh my God, none of us can lie, can we?" And like, <laughs> and like, <laughs> and like, tucks in as she's like putting back the <laughs> postcard. After that discussion, um, you all start to step into the labyrinth. Um, you find yourselves in the very entrance of this hedge maze. To to your left is what appears to be like a large plastic uh like map um kind of installed in a wooden um case with the with the logo of the uh, green court parks and recreations department on it <laughs> it's gonna walk over very suspiciously he's not trusting these folks anymore and take a peek approach the map yeah can i get you to roll a nature check Hell or a yeah. survival check. You can so, do one of the uh, two ranger checks. I'm gonna do <laughs> nature. I think that's stronger for me personally. Strong. Strong. Oh god. <laughs> nine. All right, you got a nine. Oh um, my word. <laughs> so here's the thing. Maps are for the weak. Maps are for people who can't navigate <laughs> the wilds 
off of senses alone like you for Mm -hmm. you navigation is a vibes based system Uh however although you never really learned how to read maps despite jack farrow's strong assistance which is probably is why you decided not to read maps in the first place like your dad Mm -hmm. was so into it you just you had to not be into it uh you're pretty sure maps aren't supposed to look like this this map is perfectly square and shows a just variety of twisting paths however as you watch it these paths continually change weaving together and unweaving leading to dead ends and straight through there doesn't appear to be like an end point anywhere on this map and it changes constantly you glance over the map's key uh there's no symbols on it just like a series of words in sylvan would you like to read it um yes i would like to i'm gonna read it out loud too is that okay go for it okay um it's in the player chat oh i didn't know if you wanted to read it no you're welcome to. you're very exciting <laughs> okay so he's gonna read heed this warning ye that enter here to pass through these gates is to know your greatest fear lost are the madmen god thought to save now rots his flesh in the eternal grave brought to you by the feywilds Green Court, Parks and Recreation Department. Hmm. That seems particularly ominous. No. I, what? I think this is just a really cool historical poem. I don't Ahead like you, that historical poem. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> Ahead of you, just past the uh, sign, is a fork um, going <clears> in. <throat> three different directions you can continue forward or go left or right you are however past the entrance sunk into pitch darkness it is in fact so dark that even those of you with dark vision can only see about 10 feet in front of you Fleur, you are guided solely by the like glowing light of the axe strapped to your back we shout out to the axe um yeah, letting gonna... me see <laughs> It's going to like reference that map again. <laughs> and he's going to be like, so I think we should go uh, right. The map says to go right. All in so favor? Should, should we listen to the map? I don't think that the parks and recreation people would steer us astray. Surely not. You're the ranger. So right, I, I will take out. On this I, one. I will take out my notepad and start writing down where we go. Though, like what turns we make. Oh, smart um, mess. Yeah. In case, in case we, we end up in a circle, uh, Ian's uh, gonna confidently head down that way. Unless I will follow, but I would like to ask the DM what sounds we hear as we're walking. It is mm. deadly silent in this maze to the point where. Your every footstep echoes in the quiet. It's like that kind of quiet that it is so silent that every tiny noise is unbearably loud. Um, do we see anything as we kind of step down this or do we need to just continue? You continue forward. Okay. I keep having to go back and grab Aspen and move him a little forward <laughs> and me a little forward. <laughs> As you move forward, the uh, the path veers sharply to the left. Oh, so it's our only option. Correct. Oh, look at this, y'all. No more decisions to be made. The path is guiding. The Parks and Rec Department knows <laughs> the way. Now you have the chance to either go right or left. Um, you can hear like rustling in the branches, like something is moving through the hedge around you. Oh, can I do a quick nature check? Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. 26. Uh, you kind of stop for a moment and pause. You're not super familiar with the nature of the Feywild. However, this is, for all intents and purposes, your native plane. Things here that you should not know come more naturally to you. The way that some things are just intrinsic knowledge on the material plane, like the sky being blue or the ground being hard. You know in the Fey Wild where there are trees, there are dryads. Mm-hmm. And you realize that you are not alone in this maze. Okay. 
and something the, is watching you from the branches that surround you is it like all around me I'm sensing this or in a specific direction it feels like although the presence is to you directly ahead of you kind of in in the hedge maze that stretches before you mm -hmm. um you realize that you have felt dozens of versions of this presence since you entered the maze only moments mm. ago Ew. um Ian, Ian's gonna like reach down and like kind of pat Aspen on the head and just kind of like whisper to him to see if he like feels anything and just tells him to like be on alert um <laughs> he's like really wish I could talk to you like Stavros can I um, will. <laughs> with that thought I will just try I guess to tell if there are any, I know we couldn't hear any, but like if there are any small beasts around that I could inquire after. A little guide. A wee guide? Nature <laughs> check. Okay. Mm. Um, <laughs> Sorry for the yawns. I'm having <laughs> asthma. Oh. We. Uh, dirty 20. Ooh. All right. Um, fifteen plus five. Can I have oh, any wow. wisdom saving throw? Certainly. <laughs> All of us. Ooh, like, I, you, you may. Uh, Panic and stress. <laughs> <laughs> that says uh, wisdom. Natural twenty for a twenty-seven. No fucking way. Get it, Vess. <laughs> Pop <laughs> off. <laughs> There's something small kind of like scrambling around in the branches of the hedge near you, but you are quite certain it's too far away for you to commune with it. That's fair. Um, any difference in the 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 dirt of these three paths? The no paths are all packed dirt okay. that look to have been traveled precisely identical numbers of times. So helpful. Uh, is there a I oh, have uh, I have Macbeth who has keen hearing and smell. Uh, can I have him do a uh, perception check? Yeah, go for it. For... Okay, beautiful. He has advantage on this. Sweet baby. I know. Let's see. One. And a two. What's this one? Come on. Okay. So eighteen uh plus one. Nineteen. Um Perception. Macbeth kind of approaches Vesper, who's sort of peering at something scrambling through the, the foliage mm -hmm. near you, and sniffs the air and then whines and flattens his ears back kind of backing away from the hedge that vesper is examining i don't think we should go that way so don't go right okay. yeah um i'm gonna be honest the the map was not really a map uh i just guessed on the first one hmm. okay yeah i'm well you guessed good yeah it's called being a ranger um so mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Essie. <laughs> Here's my thing. Um, Here's who told me not to do this, and what do I do? I did it. I apologize hey, for being an asshole, know what? and I'm so you sorry to put that on. Here. We can't control the first feeling or thought that comes, but we can control the second. And I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I Look at like your I growth. I feel like I probably could have <laughs> controlled that first one a little bit better, but I appreciate... he definitely could have. He for sure could have. But it's okay because this has Ian. has a drawing of the map, right? Oh yeah, we can only just as, retrace yeah. our steps. Only Here's as what far I'm as saying: we've come. Yeah. Do we not like getting to Pan's? Not going to be easy, right? It's not supposed to be easy, right? I mean, should, I, we, should we not I, go towards the, the danger? I if the if the poems say it, you know that we will face our fears. However literal or metaphorical that may be i think fleur's got a point thank I, you if there's so any kind of mad here i don't think going away from it is going to be very useful 
So you want to go Laura, I understand. I'm sorry. You go first, Ian. <laughs> no, I was just trying to figure out if 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 Fleur was just saying to go towards it as in go straight or to go towards it as in go towards whatever Vest was just hearing. That's out of my hands. I can I mean, literally see my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I know you are very strong, Fleur. I personally yeah. am looking at Vesper and Rosalie and Ian, and I think I we shouldn't that. go into danger. <laughs> you keep that. Uh, is there any pebbles on the ground? No. no oh, perfectly anything. smooth, flat, packed dirt. I say we just go straight, right? Like if we just came in and we went right, if we go left, aren't we kind of like doubling back? I'm with you on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I was I was raised with a ranger. <laughs> so let's, All right, let's then, Ian, final straight say. Is. Go straight. All right, you continue straight, straight and yeah. come to another fork in the road. You can oh, either no. <laughs> go left or continue straight. Ah, oh, fuck. Uh, we could just keep on keeping on. Yeah. What's your instinct say, Ian? Um, Ian's going to, like, close his eyes. <laughs> oh, God, here we go. He did this and in the Ian. forest once. True, that's true, that's true, that's true. Roll... I'm just pulling up my options here. Roll a D100. Oh shit, okay. Um, he's gonna close his eyes and take a like deep inhale. And that is a 22. Prince of Betrayal? Is oh, that dear you? God. Uh, mm, nope I don't think so <laughs> maybe who are you there is no response Ian um, uh, he always does something? this he'll just close his eyes and then <laughs> he'll like, I, he did it in a forest <laughs> once when I got lost and he had to come find me what, and then what we got lost boy? on the way home. Well, if it <laughs> helps. What is it, boy? <laughs> Just connects me to nature a little bit better. Also, if you guys were to say, I don't know, that I was like a prince of something, what would you say? Any Anything in particular? I thought we talked about the tattoo. Dumbassery? Oh, my God. Okay. Let's I can minor sh- illusion it again if you want. Like, is um, that what you're really worried about right now? The tattoo? Mm-hmm. It's not. A- it's like, we'll have time I when mean- we get back. We, and then we, Fleur kind of clocks that there's actually something wrong and she grabs Ian's shoulders and takes him aside and goes, what happened? So when I closed my eyes, right? Yeah. And I did that thing that I do when I'm in nature and I'm trying to like feel mm-hmm. the vibes and try to figure Are out. Are you telling me something happened? Yeah, so I heard. Oh my God, Prince of Betrayal is that you? And I said, "Uh, maybe I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know." And then I asked who they were, and uh, nothing. Did you recognize the voice? Did I? No, no, mm -mm, no, not here. So I know that much. Wasn't you should you should do the closed eye thing more? Did you get a sense of what direction the voice was coming from? No, can't say that I did. Okay, so, okay. Well, um, with peace and love. You gotta stop I saying that. Really don't, I don't know who betrayal is. I don't, I don't know who that is. So, I don't either, but also we have to tell our friends the direction to go and I'm not feeling very confident in either direction right now. What does your heart, don't close your eyes. What does your heart tell you? Um, Aspen? <laughs> <laughs> would I, just a, a tangent question, would I, I know it, hearing Fleur say that, would I know anything, perhaps from Rowan or from uh, the, the Feywild history book or like Sylvan one? Um, roll a, a history check with advantage because you read, you read that Feywild history book. The, the parallel histories. Grateful to have a friend who reads. <laughs> shout out. we all be so lucky <laughs> shout out Beth. i don't know reading got me in a pretty um, sticky you situation. said history correct <laughs> T. T. Yes. history yes 
Oh my god, Leon's the anti-literacy goddess. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, 17 plus 13, 30. Wow. Oh, 30 yeah. is gonna do it. She's um, like, you don't need to read if you're hot. That's <laughs> as Leon, that's her mindset. Why so, are your eyes going anywhere but the, besides me? <laughs> the phrase Prince of Betrayal is not a phrase with which you are like familiar mm-hmm. from your readings, but mm-hmm. you do know that there were most recently two princes of the Fey Wild. There was Puck, mm-hmm. heir to the throne of the Summer Court, who later became, as you know, the Frost Prince from what you've learned from Hearsome, and Mustard Seed, or Hearsome, heir to the throne of the Green Court. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, wonderful. So I say, well, I, Prince of Betrayal doesn't particularly ring a bell, unfortunately, but there are two recent princes, and we know mm-hmm. one of them, which is H, although I can't imagine betray anyone, and the other is, well, your tattoo, who seems a much more likely candidate. So that Do you think they be- could tell that you have the tattoo? I am more concerned that does do, do, do they think you're the Frost Prince? No, I don't think they think it's the Frost Prince here because they'd call him that. Is H S E is H the Prince of Betrayal? There is a rustling in the hedge near you, and a uh, head pops out, followed by a body which is attached to it. I feel like I should clarify your face. <laughs> you are all Just like, your head. whoa! Wow. <laughs> no. It's still spooky um, season, so. <laughs> a woman emerges from the foliage. Her skin is made of like perfectly smooth wood. She is beautiful and curvaceous and uh, maybe about 5'3", five, 5'4", five, with long pointed ears and hair the color of moss that she wears in like long flowing waves uh they kind of hang over her breasts and she's got like leaves conveniently stuck to conceal her modesty (laughs) below um she emerges uh next to you ian and uh says hi Ian, like, kind of, like, looks out of the corner of his eyes at her because he's suddenly immensely aware of what Hearsome said earlier about don't talk, don't touch, don't taste, whatever, <laughs> whatever he said. <laughs> All Ian can remember is talk, touch, taste. And he's like... Hi. <laughs> What's your deal? I haven't seen you here before. Uh, it's because I'm not here. Are you okay no yes maybe uh, he, he's gonna glance over at like Bess and Fleur like <laughs> I go please. we're tourists and maybe lost the map wasn't as helpful as as we thought it would be and I like yeah. look kindly at Ian no it it's I mean it's a maze so I think that's kind of the goal of the design that would make sense yeah um well, I'm Maple. Hi, welcome. You don't have to introduce yourselves. I know tourists are always all stressed about the name thing. Not really that kind of fay, but you know, I won't get hurt by false equivalencies. We're in a magic maze again. So, um, so what's your deal? Wait, so you're Hansen? like you're like chill fay, right? Like Maple, the chill fay. Are you chill fay? What do you think? Yeah, you seem you seem pretty chill. So, yeah. what's what's your deal? Why why are you here? Yeah, they call me the Prince of Chill, actually. Um, so I'm yeah, we're here just oh trying, my God. trying to go what through this uh, <laughs> at a risk of being presumptive, and I like step forward and, and go toward towards Ian uh, and, and and say, um, we're actually looking for Pan to help a friend. Yeah, I was I was getting there. She oh. looks at you, Vesper, and then you, turns Ian? her attention back to Ian and kind of like <laughs> Like, puts, like, a hand on his shoulder and is like, oh, so you're looking for Pan. Well, I've never seen him. The labyrinth's kind of big and oh. honestly hard to navigate. Um, yeah. I think it's, like, like, like I have walked all over this thing, right? Like, I always go home to my home tree. That's how we work or whatever. You know, save the trees. But, like, um, totally. yeah, right? Right? They're, like, yeah. so important. I feel like Is it totally tough on it. you without the sunlight? Ian looks you know, up. That's a- <laughs> That's a really good question. Um, so like when this labyrinth was like created or whatever, 
um they like magically ensured that like there would be a permanent like daylight spell effect wonderful that was considerate it's not yeah, night no. here yeah well like it's obviously it's not it's dark out like duh but like, i no, i turn to ian us, and go well uv isn't technically uh visible so it may just be a modified version yeah so like oh. like for the dryads like to like keep us alive because you know like we live in the trees that's so nice of them to keep you alive i know like like when he built the labyrinth like like that was like so considerate so like it was so... pan who built the labyrinth right no why would pan trap himself that'd be silly wait who trapped pan what do you mean who trapped pan um well so i wasn't like i was like a seedling when like yeah, they yeah. you know like like when the, you mm-hmm. know like like it's hard to remember um and people are like weird when i ask about it like nobody here like wants to talk anymore i'm so lonely i'm so lonely it's so Aww, rare that we have like I'm company so especially like handsome company um Stop. anyways so um uh so like so like so like what's the deal with like your party members so like like are you dating the like tall elf or like are you like single like you just <laughs> essie like I mean, are you never in a million years kindly sorry ian you're very nice and i think you're just it's it's because sorry. she's into <laughs> she's into musical instruments actually um they're dating their ukulele so like i guess i just don't <laughs> the bill you know what i mean but anyway so is this your home tree yeah it is you want to like come inside like uh, rosalie curious, like, will yeah. uh cut her off and grab ian's arm and actually be like <laughs> actually um i think i think we gotta go on our way um it's kind of a big map upon seeing this happen fleur is like she's been sitting here patiently this whole time <laughs> Everyone's speaking a language she doesn't understand. Oh, she's frustrated. <laughs> she's pissed off. <laughs> she's so mad. And then all of a sudden, um, and Jenny knows why, um, I want her to suddenly know what everyone is saying. Okay. Um, so you hear, you catch on, like, right as you hear her invite Ian into her house oh. and Rosalie, like, possessively grab onto his arm. Fleur goes, great move, Rosalie. Hi. Hello. Hi. Oh, I know so, I missed quite wait, a bit. Wait. You're what? a human who can speak Sylvan. That's like so rare. Are you we're n- speaking common? Anyways, no, Fleur, we're, we're about not. to keep going. And <laughs> Rosalie common. like will actually kind of pull Ian <laughs> around <laughs> to oh, go straight. Okay. Goodbye, Maple. Okay. I'll <laughs> physically get in between Ian and the train. Bye, go, Rosalie. Go. If you ever ditch the jealous girlfriend, I've always got a, not a spare bed you can sleep in, but I do have one you can sleep in. It was uh, nice meeting you. <laughs> As we start walking, Fleur goes, what did y'all mean by Sylvan? Um, yeah, the whole conversation was in Sylvan for mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Well, like the start but, was, because it was yeah, the language no, the, I don't understand. The whole and thing, then I understood. You were speaking Sylvan, by the way. The whole that doesn't time. Make sense. We didn't switch. You did. This, this maze is pretty cool, then. I, there's a lot of things we can go. Should we keep going? Uh, um, yeah, where do you guys continue to? Why I'm you, going you straight. Pulled us straight, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, while Ian is being pulled by Rosalie. <laughs> So I wait, love the jealous Rosalie. <laughs> uh, are you are, are you saying is there you know did you like mean anything by that? Yeah. And Rosalie will like acknowledge she's grabbing onto his hand and quickly like throw it back to his side. Oh, oh my and- god. <laughs> And it's like, you know, we were just, we, we don't know how much daylight we have. And like, well, it's dark. So none. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how are you feeling? Is the vibes this way? Yeah, Rosalie there's... will walk a little faster. <laughs> Straight. Ian gets As he's like running to catch up with Rosalie. <laughs> As Fleur witnesses Rosalie's just like absolute flustered, she like chuckles and shakes her head and looks at Bess. <laughs> Ian, Ian's like kind of sad. He doesn't really know. Oh. How to... He was so trying I to have... he was trying to flirt with this pretty dryad and then yeah. thought Rosalie maybe meant something, and then now he's not flirting with anybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
God, it's so hard yeah. to be him. So hard. What a to hard be life. Him. Yeah. I I tug on, I do tug on Fleur's sleeve and just go. If you wanted to practice comprehend languages, I can help you, but I really don't think you should you should try it on your own. What do you mean? Because you were speaking. It, it it's fine. I just you know I wouldn't want yes, you can't. to like mispronounce a syllable and you know. But are you saying are you saying I cast a spell then? I figured because. Well, I know how frustrated you get when you can't be part of the conversation. So I, I'm not mad if you look through my spell book or anything. Yes, I didn't look through your spell book. <laughs> you were speaking Sylvan, Flirt, but it it's fine. We can figure it out. I'm sure it's yeah, just a forest thing. I think we should figure it but out. But you should know that that's, that that's what happened. Um, I mean, and I will hold cool I will hold Flirt's hand and we will continue. Yeah. <laughs> so it looks like we're going to I make I make a mental like yeah. I reach out sort of a mental note to my spell book to be just like hey can you <laughs> look, follow look up. It? yeah <laughs> yeah no problem Vess. Nope. there's like super strong magical energy here it's like super easy for me to communicate with you if you need like any help just let me know oh thank you uh, I, so... I, I certainly will I appreciate it it's amazing of course it's super strong communication energy and yet <laughs> you're so <laughs> Um, you find yourselves in like a kind of opening, a uh, sort of clearing, um, not too big. You can hear like the rustling of presumably more dryads around you, but none make themselves seen. Okay. Um, Rosalie, as you walk by, a little like hand catches at your hair and gives it a tug and then disappears before you can turn around. Rosalie's going to sigh deeply and actually look at where Ian's, it was Ian's arm nearby. <laughs> I, I, right now he's standing next to you. He finally caught up. <laughs> he will grab it this oh. time. <laughs> so this does mean something. It's just dark. It's just dark. I don't want you to get lost. Yeah, hang on to each other. <laughs> okay. It, it, Ian just like places his hand over Rosalie's for a second. And he's like, um, so we do, we recognize we're in a clearing, yes? Or no? Yes, you do. Okay. Uh, can I look around, see what's happening? Anything different? Perception? Nature, yeah, go for it. Everyone? Okay. Uh, eight. Uh, Hard to perceive. Wanna you perceive. see a pair of like syrup colored eyes wink at you from the trees. Oh. Uh, Ian like looks down at his feet and then he's gonna like step like a half step closer to Rosalie. <laughs> <sighs> so uh do you want to keep going to uh, take a break or uh should I check the vibes again? As long as can I roll a perception check? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I roll a 15. There is a uh opening in the hedges ahead of you. Presumably the path continues forward. Um Someone behind you curses at you and Sylvan very quietly. Um, just like it's like if someone like walked by you in a club and just like, like jealous bitch, like right as you like walk by. No one else catches it, but you do. Um and yeah, that's you don't really notice anything particularly notable. Um Rosalie will just kind of suddenly pretend to trip and fall onto Ian a little bit. <laughs> Ian, Ian's gonna like catch her and like look down and like, are you okay? Is it your shoes? Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. And then like glare at the darkness. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Ian's gonna like pick her up and like this time like hold, oh, like wrap his arm through Rosalie's <laughs> and be like, you can you can like lean on me if you oh, if you need you. to. I, it's, Blur, it's can I get a weird magic check? <laughs> Absolutely. This is my favorite combat we've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> 14. Right. <laughs> On a 14, listen, Blur. <laughs> now, it's the year 2000. Yeah. 2000, the year of Our Lady on Fire, yeah. 2000. You, society has a lot of growing to do in maybe mm -hmm. the next 22 or so years. <laughs> been called a fair degree of names for your own levels of promiscuity yeah you are in fact a proud slut and Hell you yeah. have your fair share of tricks 
And this is one you would never try because it is simply the oldest trick in the book. Rosalie is very clearly marking her territory for other women. And it makes you a little uncomfortable. (laughs) Yes, it does. (laughs) Blur goes, Rosalie? Yeah? There's more than just dryad seeing. Vess is just worrying for Rosalie's vestibular sense having tripped on a flat path. It's going to glare at Fleur and like, since like, Fleur I winks at you. you As he's giving uh, Rosalie bardic inspiration, I'm encouraging this. Go ahead and mark that down, Rosalie. I. <laughs> In fact, Rosalie, I will can I always can I, uh... encourage Rosalie flirting with Ian? And then after OTP a pause, can I get a quick persuasion check? <laughs> after oh, yeah. a very long pause, Fleur goes, with peace and love. <laughs> uh, 15. Ian, her feet are, like, not working too good. You think that you might need to, like, help support her for, like... Oh, do you, do you want me to, like, car- carry? You can, like, hop on, or oh, I'll just, oh. like, hold you up, or... Uh, Rosalie will like whisper to herself, like, redirect, re- smile, and answer. Yeah, uh, my ankle, my ankle's just, yeah, I think I twisted it. <laughs> oh, Ian, Ian's gonna, can Ian, uh, dig in his backpack for like a scrap of no, fabric it's, it's or something? It's okay. It's a, um, <laughs> okay. Well, I just mean, here, and he like know, kneels down so that you can like hop on his back. He's really good at first aid. <laughs> oh. You know, my mom used to kiss it sometimes when I. <laughs> you want me to to kiss your ankle? It's okay. That's just I'm a silly. Sure it's a sad date. Yeah, yeah, that's silly. medically accurate. To it's do. medically accurate. No, I, I'd say it's okay. Not. <laughs> um, I'm going to need Fleur to roll a persuasion check, Essie roll a deception check, and then based off of that, I'll have ro- Ian roll insight. Unless okay. Vesper wants oh to re steer this conversation <laughs> towards the truth. Um, I got a 22. <laughs> 27. Essie got a 27. Uh, Ian, can I have you roll an insight check? Yeah, you betcha. I I am I, I remain oblivious, but I would like to like keep a, a log of our injuries for Dr. Vivian because <laughs> like she would hurt me yeah. otherwise. It makes oh, perfect best. fucking sense. Um Ian like, like Uncle Record's gotta thing. be accurate. Fleur's not like a cleric or a doctor. Yeah, Rosalie's yeah, yeah. mom is both a cleric and a doctor. You've seen her bring people back to life. You've seen Rosalie bring people back to life. You've witnessed Essie bring Vesper back from the brink of death super recently. And actually. Yeah. And like, so if you were going to trust either Essie and Rosalie or Fleur, who notably sometimes needs help opening band-aid packets true. you're pretty sure you you trust rosalie and essie uh yeah so like, well sit down sit down sit down for a sec uh, uh he's gonna he's gonna kneel down and he's gonna be like so you're the cleric here and he's like kind of just says it like in a low whisper do i need to like s- say anything or like uh, you just gotta really put your heart into it Right, right. Okay. And he's going to like gently like lift up her, her like leg and he's going to just <laughs> give a little smooch on her ankle. And he's going to, he's going to linger for a second because he's putting his heart into it, you know? And then he's going to gently put it down, put her like leg down. But you know, I don't think Mary Jane's are the best um, sh- shoes for hiking. Not that we're really like hiking, but um, I can help you maybe pick out some hike- hiking boots if you're interested we are in the middle of pan's labyrinth yeah, yeah. So anyways, I, turn, yeah. I, I i as this is happening i do like because i'm holding fleur's hand just like tug a little bit to like bring her ear down to me fleur, and just <laughs> yeah and just go like i don't understand not only is that not standard operating procedure but why would if it's hurt why wouldn't she just get it fleur yes. rosalie is very poorly flirting oh yeah <laughs> Yes. You should help her. No, no. You know what? In this circumstance, it's actually a little more fun to watch them just struggle through it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to gonna cast suffer, message. I'm going to at least suffer with joy, you know? 
I'm going to cast message to Rosalie and I'm just going to say, I am so proud of you right now. I don't know what came over you, but yes, make him literally kiss your feet. <laughs> uh, I'm not too sure if Rosalie can actually even see Essie, but so she's just going to give a thumbs up. <laughs> Ian, Ian sees it and like gives her a thumbs up back. Like, okay, cool. <laughs> oh, <laughs> We're thumbs making up. progress. A thumbs up. A thumbs up. Uh, he's gonna like. We're saying that to Vesper. Reach <laughs> out for her hand to like help Rosalie back up. Oh, thank you, thank you. Feeling feeling better? You still need to lean, or you good? Uh, uh, I. And Rosalie's like beet red. Um, I, I I would still like that piggyback. I think I'm. I'm the strongest one in the party, so I could probably handle that for you. Oh, yeah, I could probably uh, carry you, no problem. Okay. (laughs) I think you should be ready. Fleur, I think you should be ready in case we get attacked. But wait, yeah, Fleur, you should also probably fight. Yeah. I'll I'll carry, it's fine, I'll carry you. And he's going to, once again, offer his back (laughs) to Rosalie. All right, where are we going? (laughs) Are you Scott, guys continuing straight? forward? Yeah, I yeah guess. we'll yeah. continue forward. Every time Fleur tries to cock block. <laughs> <laughs> right there. <laughs> so I guess we're going all the way forward. All right. So you continue forward. Sorry, I have to pull y'all over to the next. Hang on, I gotta Room. copy and paste. Oh. Everyone group together. Everyone group together. Everyone group <laughs> together. Same time. Where's, same your, buddy? Where's your travel buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Never You're swim up. without a buddy. <laughs> P. Uh, good. It's good advice. It actually is. All right. You all uh, kind of push through this path and uh, find yourselves facing a- another fork in the road. However, as you approach like where the, where the uh, maze turns a corner, a tiny little creature, uh, I'm going to let you decide who goes first, flits out. Who's the first in the, uh, in the line here? probably our ranger but i can't see the new map i i also can't oh no but i also think it's probably yeah. our ranger yeah. <laughs> it's definitely our ranger carrying our cleric well all right, all right. so give me, give me a give me just a second to make sure we're still where we need to be. <laughs> what's that supposed to mean <laughs> Why okay, hate i think we are making moves because <laughs> it's so much we're fun <laughs> I'm trying so hard not to piss myself laughing. (laughs) I'm I'm trying so hard to like not have game in the most teen boy way I possibly can. You're doing so good. You're nearly a 30 year old woman. (laughs) I am so, this is the most accurate love story between two teenagers I've ever seen. Two 19 year olds. We're noting that both of these women are closer to 30 than they are to 20. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Okay. Uh, Ian, you carrying Rosalie on your back, lead your party down the maze. You see it turn a corner, and as you reach the point where it turns right, um, something tiny and sort of bright darts out at you on little dragonfly wings. Uh, And you can hear high-pitched giggling. I need both you and Rosalie to make a constitution saving throw. Oh god. That one. No. 11. Okay. Um we're going to start with Rosalie. This is so easy. Rosalie, you failed. Uh actually, which one of you has the lower initiative modifier? Uh I have a plus 1 for my initiative modifier. Mine's plus 6. But Rosalie did crit fail. Rosalie crit failed. She would she would have to make the save first anyways. Um, and then Ian, you are surprised you don't get a reaction. Never mind. So um oh dear God. This tiny creature darts out at you, out at you, laughing maniacally. Rosalie, you rolled very poorly on your constitution saving throw. So a tiny hand sharp and bony like the thinnest fingers you've ever felt dig into the skin of your lower leg and you feel yeah is it the same leg that just got kiss- kissed mm-hmm. <laughs> Damn. you feel Damn. the most excruciating pain you've ever felt 
as the bone within your leg is ripped from your body and disappears. Can Ian feel that? Because I, I mean, he's in there. You feel Rosalie's entire body go tense and you hear her let out a blood curdling scream of pain. Um, Ian, you rolled very close to the necessary saving throw. So as you turn to look at her, you feel the same tiny hand grab onto the tip of your finger and you feel the bone of your finger disconnect from the tendons that hold it in place and vanish into thin air. (laughs) Ian, clutched in your palm is a 20 gold piece. Rosalie, before you can even react to the pain, you feel it again shoot through your body <laughs> as your femur. <gasps> oh, God. It's a tooth fairy for bones. Uh, you <laughs> are in incredible pain. Ian, you're hurting. This is like some of the worst pain you've ever felt. Your bone was just ripped from your body and disappeared. However, Rosalie, you black out from the pain. You are not unconscious. However, your movement speed is reduced to zero. I'm still carrying you her. You cannot right? take any yeah, actions. You're carrying Correct. her. Okay. Fleur goes, What the hell just happened? Hearing the scream. Wait, am you I can conscious? Speak only falteringly. Okay. Ian kind of leans forward as Rosalie like slumps and he like takes his hand that the bone was taken from and he just like shakes it out as if it's going to do anything and like just tosses <laughs> this gold <laughs> down the path. No, no moving. Ooh. I'm sorry. I Lurk claps her hands. What happened? Don't touch. Are the you thing. guys okay? Don't touch the things. Don't let them touch you. Don't touch the things. What happened? Rosalie will just scream again, mm-hmm. and it will I... probably take a lot just to scream. I think it's taking our bones. We need to go. Then, then we mm-hmm. need to run. Is what we need to do. Yeah. And he... I'm with Lurk. He's like, can you hold on at all, Rosalie? <laughs> and he just tightens his grip and then like grabs more with like his lower arm than his hand on the other leg uh, and is ready to fucking go. He's pissed. <laughs> all right. Do you guys sprint down this path? Fucking absolutely. Yes, as fast yeah. as we possibly can. You sprint can. down the path and come to a fork in the road. Also, Rosalie, uh, it's worth noting, you just lost 75% of your hit points. Three quarters of your hit points. Yeah, I mean, a whole leg, the whole leg bone. <laughs> Femur, <laughs> tibia, amphibia. Yeah, they're, they're gone. Leg. One. They One. gone. Uh, no healing spells will assist, correct? Correct. Unless Is... you want to kill her and use true resurrection. <laughs> Which I don't really think a bard can do. Mm. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, no, and I can't. Is there... Uh, just like looking back behind us to where where it had been flitting um i look back at rosalie is there any way i can see if it's an illusion of some kind if there's it's vanished whatever this creature okay. was is gone blur screams left or right um left left okay <laughs> <laughs> you bang a left who's first it looks like essie is uh leading the pack yeah yeah, Essie, I'll I need you back. to make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Oh Very cool. My God. Y'all, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Essie, you hear that horrible mind scratching nails on a chalkboard laughter again and <sighs> something on tiny dragonfly wings dive bombs you. Can I Ian to... like whistle to Aspen to like block it? Or like bite it? You are surprised. Oh, okay. Oh. In D and D five E, first of all, real quick, D and D five E's surprise <laughs> mechanics blow. Everyone yeah. who's ever played a previous version of D and D knows that surprise in five E is basically fucking nothing. Okay, so we're just gonna put it out there. However, rules as written, when you are surprised, you cannot take reactions. There's no such thing as a surprise round, so you do get to like fight afterwards but you can't take reactions which is stupid yeah. it should be a surprise round you should get at least one round of surprise if not more from mm-hmm. surprise in D 5e wizards of the coast write it down anyways <laughs> um 
<laughs> bring back I love our passion for this mm-hmm. it's yes. like me and peace clerics like take uh, them yeah. out of the game <laughs> <laughs> anyways um let me get back in the zone Essie, yeah you lead your friends forward uh ian carries rosalie who's barely conscious you can hear her just like sobbing in pain rosalie when you are scared or hurt what do you think of what Uh, is the thing that's keeping you clinging to consciousness what is the thing you're trying to take comfort in right now rosalie will probably think of that memory of when essie rosalie and her whole family were on her bunk bed right Mm. that feeling right before she falls asleep but she wants to stay awake to hear the end of the story just how her parents tell it you can hear your mother's voice in your head as you scream in unbearable pain you are crying your for your mother you're um you're you're completely inconsolable you barely even know where you are and you can hear and then the handsome bard fell in love with the beautiful cleric. And then they fell in love with the brave werewolf. And they all lived happily ever after in their little house and listened to music and loved each other and held each other, surrounded by their lady's light. Good night, Rosie. I love you. Essie, you charge forward and that hideous, terrible laughter like nails on a chalkboard surrounds you in all directions and you feel tiny knife-like fingers dig into the space around your ribs. (gasps) Essie, you can hear your mother's voice. You can hear every terrible thing she's ever said about you while you stood in the mirror. You can feel her fingers running down the slaps of your of your rib cage for just a second. You can hear her counting out loud and telling you all about the terrible things she had to do to become the star that she is, that she oh. now expects from you. You can taste clear, thin broth on your tongue, and then you can taste your own pain as you bite down in unbearable pain and blood fills your mouth coppery and sweet and salty and it's the only thing that keeps you conscious as you feel your torso collapse you feel i'm still conscious crumple to the floor in unspeakable pain you can't get any words out through your mother's voice in your head now remember sweetheart friends are competition you don't need anyone but me all right all you have to do is make me proud and that's the reason you were born sweetheart because my time might be over but your time is just beginning love is not something you receive just for existing it has to be earned fleur sees essie drop and in one fell swoop like picks her up and like grabs her arms scooches her onto her back and is like let's go Mm-hmm. I have to I'm, take that still yeah. because I'm still conscious. Can I still say commands to Macbeth? You are unable to speak. Okay. And <laughs> as I, yeah. Fleur picks you up and slings you over her shoulder, you breathe in the smell of her perfume that she sprays on every morning that she per- purchased from um hang on bath and hit point works beautiful and for a moment you are standing in her dorm room trying on clothes and someone is telling you how beautiful you are for the very first time in your life oh and then Jenny, the pain really hitting. <laughs> becomes too much and you go unconscious because I rolled a d12. You lost your ribcage. You have no hit points left. You are rolling death saving throws. Um, 
Rosalie, you are unable to take actions. Mm-hmm. It's not my action. You are also unable to take bonus actions. It's not bonus actions. Um, that note card, that post-it card, uh, was the the gift of the protectors. So when, because Essie's name was written on it, reduced to zero hit points, but not killed outright, it's dropped to one hit point instead. Essie, you are dropped to one hit point. You are still unconscious, but you are stable. The rest of you continue to push forward. Let me make sure I'm on the right page here. Do I feel anything since this is affected by Rosalie's thing that I don't know about in character? You're unconscious. Okay. So you, um, for a moment, Essie, as you slip on into unconsciousness and Fleur's voice and your mother's voice fade, you first hear what you think is an echo of your father. You can't hear what he's saying, but he is furious and he's screaming your mother's name and you can hear yourself sobbing much younger than you are now. And then blissful peace, blissful silence, and a voice that in some ways reminds you of your mother if your mother was more confident, more alluring, all of the things that you wish your mother was, or perhaps she wishes she was. Go. It's okay, sweetheart. Any friend of my chosen is a friend of mine. And you are warm as your body sort of flops and Fleur races forward with you slung over her shoulder. Where do you go now? No one is rolling death saving throws, thanks to Rosalie. I feel like Fleur and Ian are probably running in tandem at this point. (laughs) Yeah, and like just heading straight down this path. Yeah, maybe Fleur's slightly behind because she doesn't know where the fuck she's going and she knows that her brother can see further ahead. Also, she's Mm -hmm. significantly shorter. I had to go pick up Aspen. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just following you. All right, uh, the path veers sharply to the left. We're going to keep on keeping on. We gotta there find is what appears to be a path to your right. Okay. Um. Uh, Rosalie, Essie, you both take 15 points of damage. Ian, you take three. Okay. On top of, like, the... Mm-hmm. So okay, so I'm down again. Saving throws. Yep. Um, Ian's gonna turn turn right because he's still trying to like. Flora's gonna him. follow Ian, and then when she sees that it's a room, she's gonna be like, "We gotta go." Is there anything in this room? There are two chests, and you can see like fairies hovering at the edge of the rooms, watching you. At their Shh. feet is a pile of bones. Nope. Ian's, Ian's gonna be terrifying. He's like, I thought maybe there'd be a cure, but never mind. And he's gonna zoop back out. Uh, yes, you're good. Blur. I'm good. You're good. <laughs> against your back. Yeah. You can feel that Essie has stopped breathing, and you can feel a trickle of blood from her nose begin to run down the back of your t-shirt. There goes. Fuck. We have to go. Okay. Okay. I'm going. I'm going. And Ian's gonna just keep hauling ass as fast as he possibly yeah. can. All right, as you cross this threshold into the next part of the map, Rosalie, you take 15 points of damage. I'm down. Ian, you take three. Oh, I see that as a fail. You're not down, it's your first time going down. Yeah, never mind. I'm not down because of the gift of the protectors. I will be back at one. (laughs) So, Essie, you have a failed death saving throw. You all find yourselves at yet another fork. You can either go forward or to your left. Uh... Do we see anything in either direction? Just what's nope. in front of us, I presume. Yep. Um, I feel like they've been running straight the whole time. Mm-hmm. So are we going straight? I think we keep going straight. I, we don't want to okay. go in a circle. Yeah, then okay. straight. Uh, Essie, you have another failed death saving throw. Oh, gosh. I lost Essie, you take another 15 okay. points of damage. And now I will be on death saving throws. Now I'm Blurp. done. At, like kind of goes pick up the pace 
Uh, <laughs> Ian, you can feel Rosalie, who before was like stiff and twitching with pain, go completely limp on your back. And her yep. head kind of like falls forward onto your shoulder and you can feel her long black hair sort of slide oh, down your chest. He like lets out an, oh shit. And just like, it's like, I hope we find an exit or pan soon because I swear to God, we're going to lose our friends. Um, so we get to the, what I assume is, it looks like a clearing. You arrive in a clearing. Here, there is no leaves on the hedges that surround you. But instead, um, sorry, but instead just twisted branches woven together to create like a strange golden shining wall. Above you is a ceiling that arches maybe 200, 300 feet in the air. And from the center hangs a chandelier of like warped and twisted wood in which flickers not candles, but jars containing fairies, the same fairies you've seen flitting flitting around that have done your friends such grievous harm in the corners hovering at the edges are different fairies they emit more light glow happily they don't laugh they don't leave any kind of strange shiver down your sign but instead just kind of sound like the tinkling of bells as they bob up and down um can we so is there any other entrances in this clearing or just the chandelier, just the... Just the chandelier, but Ian, there is a feeling in the pit of your stomach that you found what you're looking for. Okay, Ian's going to just keep walking forward and he's going to like, not shout, but he's going to just kind of say Pan's name, like Pan? Pan? Essie, you fail your third death saving throw. You are now dead. Er. Essie, can we take reactions or anything? You are... Or, sorry, not just actions. I don't know how we're doing. You can, but hang on. Okay. Essie. Flor, you feel that last drip of blood from Essie's nose land on the packed, packed dirt beneath you. And you know in that instant that your friend is gone. Essie... You hear your mother's voice, your father's voice. You can hear them arguing from a different room through a closed door over the sound of illegally taped musical theater shows played <laughs> on a boombox. You can hear them over the sound of you singing along. You can hear yourself sobbing and crying and hear your father slam the front door and his ignition turn over and you can hear him drive away and you can hear your mother seated at the dining room table sobbing over all of that the loudest sound is a bottle opening liquid being poured into a glass and the glass emptying as someone swallows its contents hmm. you can hear yourself begging for your mother to open the bathroom door you can hear her crying. You can feel yourself drifting away and then you can feel something pulling you closer. You feel a warm hand in yours, the laughter of the first friend you've ever had, a cat meowing, the closing of a door to a dorm room, an eruption of warmth and light from someone else's laughter that can only make you laugh along with them. You hear your mother's voice over the phone, strong for once, not shaking or trembling. You can feel Macbeth curled up next to you in bed. You can hear the voice of the mother you never had, and she speaks like Dr. Motley, stroking your hair back and telling you how much she loves you. How lucky she is to have a second child. You can hear Carla. Her little voice telling you how much she loves you and misses you and wants you to come home. You can feel tiny, pudgy hands wrap around yours, and then you can feel larger, warm hands. Take your cheeks and pull you quick, close and press a kiss to your forehead. And then you can feel nothing. 
as whatever holds you to the mortal plane splits and separates. Ian, <clears throat> you call Pan's name. And the sound of thunder resonates around you. There is a blinding, brilliant light. And then, standing before you, maybe six foot three, six foot four, with shaggy goat legs, a broad, strong chest, skin like shined copper, hair pulled back into a bun at the top of his head, curling goat horns, a flute strapped to his hip the way someone might hold a weapon, is a satyr. He has a beard braided, decorated with gold and silver beads, and eyes the color of liquid gold. He crosses his arms. Who the hell are you? Uh, we will you... be back next week oh. on the Tabletop Tavern. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Jenny. These have been my lovely players. Thank you so much for joining us. We love you. Stress and panic. We'll see you uh. soon. Um. Yep. See you next time. <laughs> maybe. Bye. See maybe. you next time. Maybe. That's a strong Effie. maybe. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait for the next episode. Follow us on Twitch for our live premieres every Monday night. Podcast more your style? Check us out on your preferred podcasting platform. We'd love to help entertain you during your commute, cleaning, or your workout. If you can't get enough of the cast, our other socials are available down below in the description box. See you Monday in class. And until next time, go Griffins. Caw, caw!